Hi everyone, so today's tutorial is going to be this lovely red and yellow apple. Now this is a really great project for learning about form and shape and how to give your objects, specifically spherical objects, form. So we've got some lovely lights and darks and um, we've got some lovely grades of colour in there. So let's make a start. And we've got the line drawing already and you've got your list of pencils in the document now i've stuck to one brand for this one um well stuck to it so far and uh it's all faber castell pencils um so let's uh let's get on with it now the first thing we're going to do is where we have these little marks here we're going to lighten those first and i'm going to indent them so the idea of indenting is that um, you can either use an embossing tool or a very light coloured pencil. And the idea is that you put a mark deep into the paper, which means that all your subsequent layers of coloured pencil will then skim over them, leaving that area white or light in the case of this. So I'm going to be using cream to do my indenting or embossing. You could also use an embossing tool if you wanted to. Uh, the one that I recommend is this one and it's a Pergamano and it's the smallest one they do, which is a 0 0.5 or 0 0.05, I believe. It's, oh, it says at the bottom, 0 0.5. Um, and it's really, really tiny nib. And uh, that's absolutely brilliant for doing very fine veining and stuff like that. Um, but you can also use an extremely sharp white or light coloured pencil. So I'm going to use a cream, which is this one. And these are the spots that you can see on your photograph on the surface of the apple. So we're just going to pushing my pencil into the paper. Oh, and there goes the nib, which yes, it very often happens because I'm making a deep mark, but it's okay because I've still got a sharp edge. So I'm just pushing the nib into that paper and just creating those little pale divots. Now this is going to look a lot darker than it will once the red's gone on. So let's just uh, just get those in. I haven't put every single one on. I've just put a few choice main ones that are there. So if your nib does break, you can because the pencil's still sharp. You can just push it in and it creates the mark just as well it's because when you're applying a pressure the nibs are susceptible to breaks and if you use an embossing tool later on when you've got all your layers and all your colors on you can then go in um, with a sharp point again and you can actually just go into that indented area and just fill it in with a colour. So you could use the cream or you could use the Naples yellow. But I'd rather just get that, um, get those indents in first. And I don't know if you can see how it has actually sort of left an indent into the paper on the video but i can assure you it has right so that's the first uh, the first thing now i'm going to start uh normally i start with putting all my darks down first but i really want to get this yellow color on this side of the apple down first on this left hand side and there's a little bit in here too as I want the red to sit on top of it. So once we've got the yellow on, we'll then start adding the darks and 
working our way back to light. Now this is the highlight area here, so we want to veer away from that and we want to keep that white. So uh, let's, let's start by lifting some of the graphite with either your blue tack or your putty rubber on this left hand side. So just tap it on and just lift off. You don't need to scrub it, it's just tap. Now these lines that I've placed in here, um, they're just indication of form and the way that the pattern goes. And that's going to aid us in creating that shape. So it's not, uh, it's not the indication of the marks in there that sit in there, it's just an indication of form. So I think that's enough from that area for the moment because we still want to be able to see what's going on over there. Just lift this side slightly more. Okay, so I'm going to start with a light cadmium yellow. That's number 105 and it's a nice sharp point and working in small little ellipses, circular motions, we're just putting on a very, very light layer virtually over the whole of this left hand side. And the reason that I'm working in small ellipses uh, as opposed to lines is because you tend to get a more even coverage from working this way. Sometimes if you work in lines, you can see the line strokes and stuff like that. Um, but with ellipses, you, you can't, you get a much more even coverage. So, and the pressure very light. Now just a nice light layer. And we're gonna take it down where there was that little graphite mark there we're going to go to about here because there's a shadow of a reflected light area just under there. So let's take it down as far as we're going to go. So around there. And I'm not concerned about putting in an outline yet. Or stroking on an outline. I just want to get this first layer of colour down. So the key to getting good form in spherical objects is all about the light and the shade. And as I just mentioned, we've got some reflected light on this area and we've got some over here. Now, for those that don't know, that means reflected light is when the light from a surface is reflected back onto the object and it creates a highlight. It's not as bright as the highlight up here. And um, that's where the actual light is sitting on it. Um, but it's still a reflected light and it helps to, when we're drawing it or painting, it helps us to convey form. So coming over to here, And I can still see some of the graphite through the yellow, but I'm really not concerned about that. That's going to disappear later. Uh, basically, everywhere where we can see this yellow tone peeping through the red, I want to have that underneath. So it's quite a, a big section.
and just make sure that your coverage is nice and even. I can see that I've got some lighter bits in places. And as your pencil starts to blunt, turn it so that you get a nice sharp edge again. You'll notice that I turn my pencils as I'm working quite often. So we're going to go just up to underneath that highlight. And again, we can still see the graphite through, but that's fine. Don't, don't worry about that. Now I'm taking it up to this line here. And then I'm going to need to start lifting some graphite from the other areas as well. Okay, so I'm just going to lift that, the outline of that highlight. And we've got a bit down the centre there. I'm going to lift this line here. And this area and also the stalk because we need to butt up to that okay actually we'll just uh, just lighten that little bit there as well right Okay, so right down into that, that little area there and up to the stalk. And again, on the other side. I'm not going to take it all the way to the edge because it doesn't appear at the edge. It does come out across here. Just making sure that's even. Okay, and then we have some of it coming down from that edge there. Avoiding that highlight area. And 
then we're coming all the way down this line here and we're going to sort of feather in to that edge and then there's quite a lot here in this section and just up to this outline here And you'll notice that your pencil skips over those indented marks. So we're just following everywhere that we can see that that yellow appears. Is quite down low. Looks a little bit scary at the moment, doesn't it? Very unnatural colour dapple at the moment. So we're taking it up the centre here. And up underneath the highlights, and then there's just a bit that comes down. So the, there's quite um, quite a lot of this yellow under layer. The majority of the apple has it. So just take a step back and make sure that your layer's nice and even. You haven't got any very light spots. I've got a little bit here. Just a little bit more there. And lightening your pressure again when you come to white areas and it just feathers that in. So I'm just refining this. I think it's with a light colour, it's harder to see than it is with a darker colour. Okay, so there's our garish yellow apple. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Naples yellow and I'm just going to apply a tiny bit of that just around here where we have that deeper yellow tone. So very light pressure. Again. In fact, even lighter pressure than uh, the first layer. I'm 
and this just comes up slightly it's mainly focused around this bottom area where the red creeps in I've got a bit of a band of it just up here, just up under that highlight. Getting nice even layers also helps your later layers lay down nicely. I'm just popping a bit round here. And just a little bit just at the one side of this section. We'll just take it slightly further on this side, just up the edge, only a little bit. And there we go. Okay, so that's uh, that's it for our second layer. Right, so before we start working on the red, I just want to add some green in that I can see across here. So we've got some distinction between um, this section and where the apple dips in. Um, because when we start working in the red, we may lose that. So I just want to uh, keep that area separate. So this is May Green. And there's only a tiny bit of this. It's nice sharp points very light pressure and it's just across the line comes up a little bit here And up there. And then we've got a little bit of it in here. And 
you can see it more where uh, it graduates into into the red pattern it's more apparent there okay so it's only a little touch but it just helps us to separate that area so that we don't end up working inside it okay there we go so now we're going to start working on the very darkest sections which is down this side a little bit in here and the very bottom so I'm just going to lift the rest of the graphite outline around the edge. And sort of tap and give it a wiggle. Okay, so the first colour that I'm going to use is uh, Caput Mortem Violet. And I'm going to start along this right hand side. And again, small circular motions, light pressure. I'm not stroking in an edge, but I'm working up to the edge. And I'm just popping this where we see the very, very darkest tones. So it's sort of just underneath that guide So I'm not worried about covering the area of, reflect, uh, of reflected light that we discussed earlier because we're going to bring that back later with either a cold grey or a white. So don't worry about retaining any highlights on this area. The only highlight we want to keep stark white is that main highlight at the top. It does get quite dark along here. And this lay should, well, this and the subsequent layers should enable you to see then how your pencil will skip over those embossed areas. So taking this right up to the edge and it just fades out along here. So just feather it out really light pressure when you're feathering it out okay 
and then we have a section of it right in the middle here so I'm just going to sort of create that dark shape in the middle You can see and even though it's very very light layer it all adds to creating depth when all the layers are on top There's just some little dark areas just there. Now I'm just going to start from the darkest area over here and just take it to meet what I've already done. Slightly thicker here. And then I'm just going to stroke a little bit of an edge here and just fade that out. And then I'll continue now that we've got that layer down and just stroke a very fine edge around what we've just done. Look for the sharp side on your pencil where it's worn down and use that to stroke in. And this doesn't need to be a perfect sharp deep edge just a bit of an edge. And again, really lightening the pressure as we come up to where this colour fades out. Okie dokie. So we're going to move on to dark red now. And we're going to pop that in everywhere that we see that as well. So very gently starting over here. And this very slightly when you get to the yellow feather it over the edge. And keep that very light pressure. And we'll just plot it in everywhere that we see it. So this is kind of like the main the main red. We're also going to take it all the way over that dark that we've just done as well. And 
And as I said before, don't worry about the areas of reflected light because we're going to bring that back later. So I think I might um, I might put this bit to music um, and speed this up slightly because uh, you don't want me sitting here with nothing to say for 10 minutes while I just put one layer on. So I'll do this. You can see where I've gone with it uh, and then I'll come back to you and we'll do the next layer. Okay, so that's the majority of the um, the body colour done. But before we move on to the next layer, I just want to start adding in some of the pattern that we can see. You don't need to do every single mark. You know, you just need suggestions of it. This isn't about um, replicating the photo. This is about um, getting the structure right and getting the form right. So yes, we're aiming for realism, but you know, we don't have to detail every mark so we're just going to pop some of these in and make sure that when you pop your marks in that you're going in the direction that they come from so look at how they come out of this edge and round because that's going to add to the realism Just very light pressure still, but just, just pop a few of those marks in. And we've got some that do butt up to the highlight. So we're going to pop some in, but just avoid that area. Now if you're looking now and thinking, oh you know this isn't dark enough, that isn't dark enough, no it's our first few layers, things aren't going to be, you know, dark yet and you can always go in, repeat the process and add more layers later on. This is just getting our bases down and getting things in the correct place. 
Coloured pencil is by no means a fast medium, but it's a very enjoyable one and one that you can achieve some beautiful effects with. I'm putting these marks down now, they will show through later layers as well. So we've got that bit there and then we've got a line and we've got one going right through that little dot. And if it if it feels wrong, uh, the angle that you're drawing at, then turn turn your paper. I can't turn my paper because you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. But um, you know, at these awkward edges, if you feel you need to, then please do turn your paper. So I'm butting this up to that green very softly. Okay, now I can go back to being a bit more comfortable. So these marks, they're really just very random. So as much as I, I'm looking at the reference photo for the direction that they're following, you know, they're very, um, I'm not keeping to the exact shape. I'm also not taking some of them up to the very edge because they don't go quite up. To the edge. Like these here, this section, they don't um they don't quite come out to the edge. But already you can see how the form is now taking shape because of the way that these lines are situated. And that green placement has also helped us because we know where to come out from and where to go up to. Now I'm going to start to stroke a very soft edge around here because that edge is redder than, um, more red than it is yellow.
Okay. So we we'll just fill in little areas of colour now. Get those little random marks on. In, in some places, it's more spotty than stripey. I'm actually going to just go over this area with a little bit more of this colour, give it a bit of a deeper layer just at the top here. Still using the same pressure, it's just another, just another layer of that colour. And just take your time over this you don't have to have to rush it and get it all in quickly mm -hmm. my little dog's having a shake Well, he's not little actually, he's rather big. Not huge, but he's not little. And I'm just going to make this area slightly darker here as well. Okay, and I've missed this little bit, so let's um, let's get this bit done over here. Just again, just random marks, just following the direction. I think Marshall might start moaning in a minute. I think you can see the cats in the other room. And unfortunately, they don't like him very much. He likes them, but they don't like him. He wants to play, they don't want to be bothered. Okay. Well, I'll put just a couple in down here, but by the time we've finished in this dark area, they won't be they won't be too noticeable. But there are a couple that can go in. And then we'll just add another little light layer of this just over here. Oh dear. Yes, yeah, somebody wants to play with the cats. Oh, 
Okay, so just take that up there. And just make it ever so slightly darker. Okay, so that will just about do for our marks at the moment. I might just pop another couple in here because I never know when to stop, apparently. So if you're a fiddler like me, you'll love doing this. There we go. Right, okay, so we're going to move on to the next layer now. Okay, so for the next layer, we're going to go to deep red, which is number 223. And we're basically going to cover all of the solid red areas that we've done. And we're going to softly go over this onto the yellow in some places as well. Uh, so again, I'll speed this up slightly and put it to music. And then I'll come back to you when we're done. Okay then, so now that that layer's done, before we move on to put any more reds in, I just want to go back to the cad light cadmium yellow and I want to add another layer just around this area to start blending some of that red and to start deepening everything up. So exactly the same as before, we're just going to use light pressure, small circular motions 
then you just start blending things. Now I don't want this yellow to go too dark so do keep the pressure quite light. We just want to start to blend and that last layer of red that we put over the yellow we want to sort of start melding that in so it creates that nice sort of orangey tone. And just concentrate this in the in the areas that that uh, that that red went over. So sort of here, we can add a little bit more, but it's quite a light yellow here. Um, I mean, you can always go over it with white again later on, but um, you know we do want to keep it quite light. So again, I'll, I'll just speed this up slightly um, so that you're not watching me just doing a layer of yellow and uh, I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so it's starting to take shape now. So the next thing that I wanna do is really try and get some of these dark tones in and build up the red areas. So we're gonna go back to the Caput Morton Violet. We're going to add that once again in the darkest areas, uh, just around the edge here and little bits in here. You can, even if you want to, add tiny bits to a few of the very darkest marks. And then we're going to add a layer of dark red again, and we'll see how we are there. So cap up Morton Violet first in the very dark, and then apply the dark red again on the top in all of those areas, not over the yellow though, just on the marks that we've already got.
Right, so the dark tones are really starting to come together now. So let's add in another layer of deep red and we're going to take this slightly further up here. Again, very lightly into just this yellow area here and over all the red areas that we've previously done. And then we'll come back and we'll start adding a little bit of deep scarlet to this area and bringing back that white, well, not white, pinky reflected light. Okay, so that layer's down and uh, it's starting to look quite cool. So I'm just gonna deepen up the green a tiny bit, just right in here. So I'm just very softly, just stroking it in right into that ridge there. Just on that side. It's only very, very, very slight just to add a, a tiny bit more definition and it just sort of comes up here a little bit to meet that red and just there okay so i'm gonna go to the burnt carmine now and i'm just gonna add a touch of that into this area here just across the bottom um so it's got more of a um a sort of pinky hue to the red so I'm just going to pop that sort of in between where the caput mortem meets that dark red 
and it doesn't make you know a vast difference but it just adds that nice tone I use burnt carmine a lot in uh, in botanical drawings it's present in quite a lot of subjects so I'm using a slightly firmer pressure now as well um, because as we've built up layers and starting to fill the tooth of the paper you need to add slightly more pressure in especially these areas where they've had lots of layers so I'm just taking it up the side and then where I've sort of left these sort of lighter spaces I'm just going to use a light pressure and just gently fill those in and when I go over with the white that'll give me that pinky undertone that I'm looking for in the um, in the highlighty area. So just very gently and tidying up that edge there. And then I'm going to do the same over here. So going in very lightly. Stroking the edge. And just a very, very light layer. And then feathering it into the darker area above. Okay. So now we're going to take our white and we're going to blend this area with a sharp white and blend in that colour that we've just laid down so that it doesn't just look like a blank area. So again, a firmer pressure for this And make sure you go in slightly into the surrounding areas and just blend and feather that in there as well. And then we're taking it up the side here. And just over a bit of this red and up slightly further there and then just very lightly reducing the pressure and softening it into that outer area and then dusting off and you can see that that's given us a nice reflected light without the area just being stark and blank. So I'm just going to feather that slightly further here. Okay, and then we're going to do the same with these areas here. So we've got a little bit in here that's darker. The reflected light is never as bright as, say, this highlight here. So just there. And we've got this one here. And always reduce the pressure as you come inwards towards where the, the main colour is. And again here. And then it little bit continues softly at this side. Just there. And we do have a very, very slight V 
bit coming in just down here. And I'm not. I'm using a light pressure again here because it's not. Uh, it's not a strong highlight. Okay, and then I can just see a few areas where we could benefit from this up here. So there's a little bit of a highlight here. And then there's one just under that little indent there. Sort of curves round. And then we've got a couple on the back of the apple just here. Got a bit of a lighter area on this side of the stalk. And another little bit just here. Okay, so now I want this to be a little bit darker because I can see that it's not uh, it's not quite as light. So I'm going back to the burnt carmine and just adding another very light layer just around the bottom area of the highlight where it's meets the darker area. And this will just knock it back a little bit. And then very light pressure just in the center and just add as many soft layers as you need to until you get the right color. More pressure in that shadow area. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go back to the white and just blend the center area here. There we go. Okay, now if we've got any tidying up to do, because I haven't put down um, a piece of tracing paper uh, to protect it, because it's only a small project and I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So if you need to clean up any areas where you've sort of dragged the pigment across the page, take your blue tack or your putty rubber and just gently lift. And that's why blue tack is so wonderful, because it just lifts away the pigment without damaging the paper. Let's just go in here. And you, you can also you can shape it so that you can go right up to the edge. It's wonderful. And then if you have any areas where you need to be more precise, you can use a Tombow mono eraser, which is um, they do a square or they do a round. I've only got the square to hand at the moment. And then you can go in, it would be easy if I could turn, I can see a little bit of graphite still there. So there we go. And then if you get rubber, um, you know, the, the dust from the eraser on your paper and it's sticking, you can lift that up with the blue tack as well, if it won't brush away. Okay, so I'm quite happy with the body of the apple at the moment. The only other thing I want to do while I've got the white out is just go around the edge of this highlight here. I don't want to touch the center. I like how stark it is, but I do want to just very gently with the point, just go around the edge where we've got these little bits coming in and just blend it slightly. So I'm just working in tiny little movements just pull in that pigment okay and that just looks a bit more a bit more realistic now it's not so 
stark and just sort of there. Okie dokie. So if you've got any areas of red that you want to deepen up, you could go back in with a dark red now. So this mark here, I just want to add a bit more depth to that. So you can just go back in with your dark red and add another light layer over the top. That just makes those markings stand out a bit more if you feel like you've lost any definition in them. Again, you don't have to be precise with this. The marks are very random. And again, if you feel like any of your shadow areas aren't dark enough, you can go back in with the, the same dark red and just deepen those up. And I'm just going to go right along the edge at the bottom here and just give it another little layer there. Okay, so now we can start working on the stalk. So I'm going to start off with a dark sepia and I'm going to plot in where the darkest areas are first. So we have a couple of little sort of holy shapes and a couple of little lines in this uh, in the top of the stalk. So I'm just going to go straight in, draw a couple of holy shapes and that dark line there and just fill them in with the dark sepia and then we've got a bit of a sort of triangle under there we've got a line that comes down there and then there's a bit of a ridge here so this doesn't have to be an exact shape. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my cream. I'm just going to sharpen that pencil up a little bit. Not too sharp though. And on the left hand side of that line, I'm just going to pop in a line of cream, a little line over that hole there, one here, and a little line above where that ridge is. Okay, so now I'm going to take the raw umber and I'm going to work on the other side of that line and around where I've just put the cream. Working in with that dark sepia and just blending it slightly around here. And then there's just a bit above that highlight there. There's a sort of little hook just here. Okay, and then back to the dark sepia and just deepen up those holes again. And that little line and then that gives us the appearance of the sort of jaggediness of that stalk okay so he's going to that raw umber again I'm just going to stroke in the edge of the stalk here And 
going very lightly down this side. And I'm going to add a light layer of this. Let's just pop in that bit there. I'm going to add a light layer of this over the whole of the stalk. all the way up to where we put that dark sepia. Okay. And now taking the burnt sienna, we're going to apply a layer of that over the top. And it's going to be darker on the right hand side, feathering out as we come to the left. And again, taking that all the way up to under that little ledge. Okay, and now we're going to go to the May green because I can see some green on this side. And we're going to very lightly add a little bit of this over the highlight that we left on that left hand side. And then feather that in to the brown. Okay, I'm going to go back to the burnt sienna again and just sharpen up the lines and add a little bit more on this right hand side, slightly firmer pressure. And then just make little sort of knotty marks coming into that green. Just little, little strokes. Just the odd little one. Okay, and now the dark sepia. Now I want this quite sharp, so I'm going to use my sanding block and I'm just going to hold the pencil parallel on the block, give it a rub and twist while I do that. And then that will give me a lovely, hope you can see, sharp tip. Okay. So let's put in that line that we had and then we've got another one coming off from that V. They're sort of jaggedy lines as well, they're not straight. Um, we've got a little bit of a notch here on that protrusion and then we've got another little line which is visible there coming up from here. And now I'm just going to very lightly, because I don't want this to be dark, apply a light layer just around the base of the stalk here and very gently up the right hand side. And that's just to increase that shadow area and add to the form and the shape of the stalk. Deepening up very slightly at the base where it dips into the apple. Straightening my edge. And uh, let's have a look. Let's just take the white. Ooh, let's not, let's drop it. Let's just take the white and on the other side of that line there, I'm just going to apply a little bit of white just to show that there's a bit of a scratch in there and just
just again on the other side of this one. Okay, and I think that is about it. I think that's about done. So yeah, I um I really hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and helpful and that you've learned something during this. Um, and if you did enjoy it, then uh, I'd love to see you next time. So thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.